Ark Survival Evolved has been around for just over 7 years now, and the game has come a long way from dinosaurs looking like this to this. But how did we get here? Not much is known about the early development days of Ark Survival Evolved, but there is one thing we do know for a fact. It was rough. Ark's developers, otherwise known as Studio Wildcard, were nearly sued for 600 million US dollars 8 months after Ark's initial release date because of some dude who founded Studio Wildcard named Jeremy Steelgleitz and his non-compete agreement from his previous job in Trendy Entertainment. But never mind that fancy smancy stuff about millions of dollars in contracts, Let's get back to dinosaurs. Ark's initial release date was June 2nd, 2015 for Steam Early Access, and let's just say people were excited to play some dinosaurs. Because in just 10 days from Ark's early access release, Jurassic World released in the theaters. The initial premise of the game was that you and or your friends are stuck on an island that's definitely not a giant space station orbiting the uninhabitable Earth. With, of course, dinosaurs. Have any questions? No? Good. Let's move on. There are combined 10 artifacts hidden in the depths of the cave on the island. And with them, combined with tributes gained from killing certain dinosaurs, you can activate boss fights under the floating things. Uh, they're called obelisks. So now that you know the basics, spend the next three months farming resources, building structures, and taming dinosaurs. Proud of your base? Cool, it doesn't matter. Because now you have to take down all three guardian bosses to unlock the overpowered tech tier and fight the overseer. Get all that? Cool, now it gets really fun because we're off the scorch. Wait, I, I missed the map? What, what did I miss? The center? Ark's second map to come out was the center. The center was the first community made map to be officially put in the game, and it was released on May 17, 2016. The center features a large redwood biome at the bottom of the map, a skull island filled with resources, and a large volcanic island to the north, a big ocean, some mountains that are cool, I guess, and a freaking floating island. No, no, don't get excited. It's not that cool. The boss fight for this map includes the Megapithecus and Broodmother in the same arena. And I think there are two types of people in this world, people who like the center and people who don't. There is no in-between. And as you can probably tell, I HATE THE CENTER. September 1st, 2016, Scorched Earth was released, and it is the second map in line for the story arcs. The center is not a story arc, because it's a community-made map that was adopted by Studio Wildcard. Story arcs are only made by Studio Wildcard, and they follow arc story, or lore if you'd like to call it that. But moving on, Scorched Earth was basically just an island, but a desert. It was small, boring, and forgettable, just like your p Scorched Earth introduced creatures such as wyverns, mantises, deathworms, and some buggy boys. It also introduced items like windmills, whips, and adobe structures to keep you and your level 7 Jerboa that you named Radar because you're basic out of the heat. The final boss for this dry and of the orange map is the manticore, a lion, scorpion, dragon looking thing. And after you kill the beast, all you get is some skins and some element that tries to keep you playing this boring map, but no one ever does. And notice how there isn't any cinematic ending after killing the final boss? Yeah, nobody knows why. There's one for literally every other story arc, but not Scorched Earth. June 12, 2017, Ragnarok. Arc's second community-made non-story map was released, and this one actually featured some interesting content. Originally, only half of the map was released in June, but the map was later finished in an update in December of 2017. Ragnarok is a huge map about 2.5 times size of the island. The Nordic map features new dinosaurs such as Ice Wyverns, Griffins, and even some custom mini bosses such as the Lava Golem and Ice Worm Queen. Ragnarok was a big thing for Ark at the time as it had items from both the island and Scorched Earth. And the final boss for Ragnarok was the dragon from the island and Manticore from Scorched Earth. So you can now rage two times as hard because neither of these flying lizards seem to land when you want them to. On December 12th, 2017, my personal favorite and probably no one else's personal favorite map was released aberration wait are you telling me you don't spell aberration with two b's are you kidding me aberration was arc's third story map release and boy was it a different game this time you're stranded on a broken malfunctioning arc with radioactive monkey gremlins and large rats aberration is a large cave with three prominent biomes the fertile or green zone the bioluminescent or blue zone and lastly the molten element region or the red zone oh i forgot there's also a surface that is on fire half the time but the only special thing about that is it has some good loot every now and then the final boss for aberration is a large tentacle looking boy known as edmund rockwell yeah. which will you know if you kept up with the arc lore. I'm not gonna dive into that here because I'm trying to finish this video as fast as I can and then disappear for at least two months again. Next, Extinction or the fourth story map was added to Ark on November 6, 2018. Extinction brings you down to Earth after completing Aberration. The map features a large city with protective walls in the center, a surrounding deadly waste den, and three biodome things. The three biodomes consist of desert, arctic, and sunken forest. Hello, mother Some of the creatures added were the men of Gamarmar, the Volanosaur, and the Gacha to name a few. There are also three titans that correspond with their respective of biodomes and they can all either be tamed or killed it's your choice really but i would recommend taming all three because you're going to need them to kill the final boss to ascend the alpha king titan
But besides these colossal structures and items, farming element, the thing you usually get from killing whole bosses, can now be done with a pickaxe and shotgun. Taking a step back from the story maps, the next DLC map that was released was another community made map, Valgera. Valgera was released on June 18th, 2019. Valgera was another special map as it featured the best of three worlds. It had features from the islands, scorched earth, and aberration. And guess what? It's a community made map, so what's the point of even buying scorched earth or aberration? But nevertheless, Valgera does have some prominent and unique features. It has biomes such as the chalk hills, a large underground aberration area, and a huge underground ocean. Also, did I mention that the only boss fight for this map contains a dragon, megapithecus, and manticore in the same arena? Yeah, there's a reason I haven't done 100 days on this map. Back to story maps, because on February 25th, 2020, Genesis Part 1 released right before shit hit the fan in the real world. Genesis Part 1 contained five very different biomes that could only be accessed by teleporting through a tech teleporter or the annoying little shit following you around all the time known as HLNA. The five biomes are the ocean, lunar, volcanic, Bog and Arctic. Some new dinos that were added were the Megatrelon, Bloodstalker, and Ferox. Also, there are new variants of dinos called X Dinos. I don't think there's really any point to these, they're just harder to knock out. Genesis Part 1 also added a big new feature called missions. You sadly have to complete all of these rage inducing missions to activate the final boss fight known as the final test where you fight Rockwell. Again, June 11th, 2020, our fourth non-story map is added called Crystal Isle. This actual giant map added a ton of new biomes, such as all these that I have no idea how to pronounce, so I'm not even gonna try. Crystal Isle has really only added three new dinos, being the Crystal Wyvern, the Giant Worker Bee, and the Tropio Gnathis. Yeah. It was originally supposed to have rock drakes, but Wildcard said no and took them out. But back on the plus side, Crystal Isles has a huge ocean to explore and artifacts that are literally a joke to get. Seriously, they're so easy to get. One year later, Genesis Part 2 was released on June 3rd, 2021. Genesis Part 2 was probably the most game-breaking map, and suddenly every resource or structure is easy to get. You literally spawn yes, sir, with a text. Yeah. Like, Ark, what happened? I missed the days where I was fighting off Dylos in South 2. Now I'm flying around with living tech robots on a spaceship millions of miles away from I couldn't find how big Genesis Part 2 really is, but just know it's massive. But even with its size, there are only three main biomes Eden, the Void, and Rockwell's Garden. And just by the names, I bet you can guess which one was corrupted by Rockwell and which is nice and peaceful. And which is literally the void of space. Even with all of Genesis Part 2's controversies, it does a really good job of summing up the story of Ark. Camriel was released on December 14th, 2021. Wait, wait, I'm getting a report that it's not called. Camriel. Oh, oh, it's the second to last DLC to Ark Lost Island. I wonder where they got the map design from. Besides that, Lost Island is a huge arc with three new creatures that were added. The Dinopithecus, the Cinemacrops, and the Marga Marga Margasaurus. Trust me, I'm saying it right, you're wrong. Lost Island really brings back that primitive survival feel of Ark, with detailed caves and a boss that will definitely kill you and your dino army on the first attempt. Not from personal experience or anything. June 12th, 2022, Ark's last DLC was released called Fjorder. In my opinion, it's the ultimate Ark map. Fjorder features several different boss fights with a nice progression system and realm. Like, what more could you want? You can literally be a Viking or Thor. But with that, Ark 1 story comes to a close as Ark 2 is set to be released in 2023. But knowing Wildcard, we aren't getting it to at least 2030. <laughs>